Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Hyperconscious Podcast. Alan, what is hyperconscious? Once you understand why something is the way that it is, now you have the power to change it. Great conversations with great people and great questions are the keys to the kingdom of unlocking your consciousness. Every single action that you do starts as a thought. When you control the way you think, you will control the way you act, and you will control the way you live. That is hyperconscious. Geographically? Geographically. Geographically. This is cool. So I would say make sure that pretty face is showing. Yes, true. They're going to want to see that <laughs> thing. They're going to want to see that <laughs> thing, Alan. It's that true. face. You good? Ready? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another very special, as always, episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. We hope you enjoyed our latest Small Talks episode where we talked all about the word simplicity. Today we're going to do a 20-minute scratching the surface episode on perception versus reality. Yeah, so friendly reminder again, the Hyperconscious Morning Minutes, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Guys, your years are comprised of days. We want to kickstart your days off right three times a week. You got Monday to kickstart the week off. You got hump day on Wednesday to to really get through that um, middle portion of the week. And then we got Friday morning to make sure you end strong. Uh, Remember, the tapestry of your life is going to be determined based on what you're doing throughout your days. So uh, get on that mailing list. If you go to the website... The hyperconsciouspodcast.com. It will prompt you to get on the mailing list. All you do is type in your email and you're on it. My goodness. I know. I loved it. Right? Yeah. Fired yeah. up. I'm fired up. Fired up. It's the caffeine. Yeah, it's definitely the ca- the caffeine is talking. <laughs> um, so perception versus reality. How do we come up with this? How do we come up with this topic? Because this was kind of we came up with this yesterday. Yep. Th- through an actual not argument, conversation that we had. Right. We dug deep on me and why I am the way I am. <laughs> right. So, yeah, give some context so I don't have to uh, talk about myself. So being hyperconscious, I think, is asking yourself the tough questions that will raise, force you to face the truth about yourself yeah. and, and about the world. So that's kind of what we're always doing, by the way, is, is getting you to really ask yourself the tough questions, like what might I regret? What, what will I never regret? Things like that. Yeah, we're in a different... It's almost like everyone is in like a different category. Yeah. yeah but this is like the the kind of the whole thing. You Be- know what I mean? Because being, being hyper-conscious is questioning why you're doing what you're doing. Yeah. And so perception versus reality kind of came up because I basically told you, I said, honestly, before I knew you, you kind of were a badass in my eyes. And we were kind of trying to figure out whether or not that was a, an intentional facade or if it was just my perception of you. Yeah. Because that was not the reality. I mean, I mean you are a badass. Yeah, yeah, no, no. But, like, you also have a big heart, right? Yeah. I, I was basically saying, to bring this to the listeners, the context, Kevin would show up in his Subaru WRX. It's, like, a loud, nice... I, I think it's a nice car. Appreciate that. Certainly compared to mine, right? <laughs> Anything's nice compared to mine. <laughs> Flintstone mobile. Right. He would be in his hoodie. You know, he'd have his music blasting. And, you know, you would show up with your gym bag and we would just get the F after it in the gym. And you kind of did come across as like, okay, he's jacked, he's got tattoos, he's got his nice car, you know, he's into rap, he's strong as fuck. Like, you definitely came off as a badass. You also fight, kind of. You know, you, you, you hit the bag and all that. And then when I got to know you more and more and more and more, I started to realize that, you know, inside you're just soft puppy. Yeah, I, I really am. <laughs> no, I'm just fucking. No, with but you. I, I am. But there's another side. Yeah, that, that isn't seen. It's it's it isn't seen from people. I mean, obviously the podcaster uh, listeners yeah. know, but it wasn't seen by me right away. You know, I wonder. And this is something that we can talk about now. We talked about it yesterday. Um, I maybe it's maybe it's also the arena. Right. We didn't. I didn't really figure that out yesterday. But like, of course, of course, I want to be a badass in the gym. Like that's one of the places I'm the most confident. 
I remember you saying that you feel like Superman in the gym yeah. and Clark Kent yeah. in your life. Yeah. Um, and I remember telling you it's because of the amount of time you spent in there. Yeah, I You're feel like competent Superman there. when I'm in front of this mic. I, I thoroughly enjoy this. Is, this is one of the things that lights me up. Obviously, you know that when I got here, I was like a zombie. I was not, it, you know, it was, I was struggling. But once the mic gets on, and it's it's good. Um, you are in a great mood now. Yeah, I'm in a great mood. Yeah. It could be the coffee also. Yeah. But so for me, that's how this episode came about because I, then I have to think to myself, all right, was I was I trying to portray a badass, right, or was that just me showing up as I was, right? You know, and then I think a lot of people, so I, I actually not only did research, but I kind of like dug into my own head before this episode because I was trying to figure out where, if you're listening, like where are you in the grand scheme of things? Versus and, where you think you, you know, are. Where do you think you are? Right. Because not only can you think you're further along than you are, but you can also think you're way behind. Right. And I don't think... I don't think people talk about the way behind part. The reason I'm talking about it is because I always feel like I'm way behind. Yeah. You know what well, I mean? Even though you're way further than you were. Yeah. So it's interesting because, so what you just said, I thought about too earlier today. Because mm. um, yesterday we decided to do this episode and we ended up postponing it to today because we wanted to think over it a little more. Yes. I think it comes down to similar to the drive to five. Most people are on one of two extremes. You're either on the extreme end of like... I'm way farther ahead than I really am based on my surroundings. Like, I was I was saying, like, oh, I'm really good at basketball. No, 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 no. You're good at basketball in Uxbridge, Massachusetts right. for pickup right. basketball. Right. I remember when I went to L.A., I got dunked on by a guy who's 5'6 in sandals who played D1 ball for UConn. And I got completely embarrassed. It was it was not a great moment for, for me or my ego. Um, he was shorter than me, and I thought I was good at basketball. No, you're, you're good in a small town, but it's all relative to your environment, right? So some people are on that end where they think they're better than they really are. And that's not a power position because if you think you're better than you are, where's your incentive to get better? Right. A lot of people are on the other end where they think they're way worse than they are, in which case you have low self-esteem and therefore that's also not a power position because you can do it. If you put in the reps. I like this is happening. So shout out to Christine and Eileen. I had a call with them. I don't know what day it was last week, but uh, two sisters, they're amazing um, young entrepreneurs getting after it, chasing dreams and fear chasing. But they went to an event and um, I told them, I said, like, one of the things you're going to realize is you're a lot further along than you actually think you are. Mm. But when you see the people on stage, you're also going to realize if you have those giant hopes and dreams, right. you're a lot further behind than you think you want to be, right. or that, you know, than you think you're going to be. So it's like, it's a balance of understanding. I think in order to move forward properly, you kind of have to know where you are because then at. you don't know where you're moving. So I wrote a couple things down and this is, this is going to be deep because this is what hyperconscious is. It is the most self-aware version of yourself. That yep. is what hyperconscious is. So no delusion. No delusion. Yeah. When you go out to the bar on a Friday night and you get hammered, why are you going out to the bar on a Friday night and getting hammered? Are you going out to have a good time, to unwind, to drop off some stress? Or are you hiding from something? Are you running from something? Are you escaping something? Now, I'm just using that as an example mm. because there's a reason bars are in business. Right. You know, there's a reason people flock to them on Fridays and Saturday nights. Now, everybody has a different reason. Right. But if you're listening to this, what are you doing and why are you doing it? Like, why do you eat lunch by yourself at, at work and you don't sit with everybody else? Why? Is, are you afraid? Do you not like the people? Like, when you figure out why you're doing these things, then you can really... I, I've had a lot of people say, like, I'm shy. I'm just a shy person. Right. Maybe. Right. Maybe, maybe you, you shy away from, you know, uh, confrontation. You don't want to be the center of attention. But is that why you're doing everything because you assume you're shy the perception versus reality is huge i like so to bring what kevin just said to a different level here if you perceive the reason why you're going to the bar as i'm just doing it to have fun but the real deeper rooted yeah. reason is because you don't want to stay at home alone because you don't like yourself then the perception is that you're trying to have fun. The reality is that you don't like yourself. Yeah. 
the only way to start liking yourself is to acknowledge that you don't and then try to work on it. Yeah. But you'll never acknowledge it and if you keep saying I'm well I'm just everybody does and that. And if you keep doing it. I right. now I have a, I think this is a good analogy. I was thinking of it like this. So even if you have like an initial oh shit, okay, that's why I'm doing that. Right. You're peeling up the corner of the sticker. That's what you just did. You just peeled up the corner of the sticker. Now you can keep peeling. You can go to the next level. You can go to the next level. Like, why did I stay in that relationship for so long? Right. Oh, because I'm afraid to be alone. Because when I'm alone, I don't get fulfillment from the things I'm doing in my life. And I try to get that fulfillment from somebody else. Mm. That's why I crave a relationship so heavy. Okay, cool. There's another thing. It, the thing is, so you can love yourself while simultaneously knowing that you should be getting better. Yeah. And I think when it comes to perception versus reality, you have to understand, like, maybe you perceive yourself as a failure because you're not doing great. Or maybe you perceive yourself as somebody who's super successful because you don't think you have anything to work on. Neither of those are true. Right. Neither of those are true. That's the perception. The reality is, even when you're the best in the world, you still work. Right. You work harder than most people do. <laughs> yeah, right. That's, you know? that's the reason you're the best in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm really convinced. That's why they say perception is reality. Can So we all have a defense mechanism in our own mind of self-delusion. It is an, a defense mechanism to avoid pain. When the truth is painful, we would rather tell ourselves a story that may or may not be true to avoid the pain. For example, I often go back to my last fitness show. I thought I would win. I told everyone I would win. I genuinely believed I was, I was like in, conditioned enough to win, even though Kevin told me, dude, you're not lean enough. So my perception... Versus the reality was very off. And by the way, after the show, I watched the video. I was not lean enough. There was a lot of things going on in my life that were less than ideal. I was having a lot of family challenges, health challenges, um, just a lot of different things. And I'm also, you know, trying to chase big dreams. And I was just really having a hard time with a lot of stuff. So instead of having more pain of facing the truth that you're not lean enough and you need to get your shit together if you want to win this show... I would tell myself the story that I'm going to win regardless. And this was not conscious. This was the opposite of hyperconscious. This was me just kind of, you know, plowing through my days trying to like outwork a bad diet and just just step on stage and think I'm going to win. Now, after that's why chasing your dreams is going to going to eliminate self-delusion because if you think you you can't win a show like you were Kevin. You don't think you can win a show. Then you prove to yourself you can, which you won. That's the reality. The truth is you could do it. Right. I think I'm just going to step on stage and win. That's not true either. So I go and try and I fail. And therefore my delusion of the fact that I can do it by default without hard work is no longer true. Both Kevin and I, after our fitness shows, were le less self-deluded than we were prior. And that's why I'm such a big advocate of chasing your dreams because it's going to force you out of those those powerless positions of delusion and into accurate thinking. So I want to connect what I was... When I basically said, like, maybe you're the best in the world or you think you're the best in the world, maybe you're the worst in the world, I'm glad you expanded on that. But also, and this is controversial, whatever, like, I'm going to try to word it in a way that everybody's going to understand it. I firmly believe you should love yourself for who you are, no matter what. But I also firmly believe that you can get better while loving yourself. Mm. That was the point I was trying to make. Right. When you're looking in the mirror, what do you see? What do you think about yourself? Now, there's a fine line, you know, my nose is a little bit crooked, or I have, the, like, okay, fine. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about, are you unhappy with your body because you know you could work harder? Right. You know you could achieve... Right. Your fitness goals. Mm -hmm. You know you could achieve your financial goals. That's when, like, if somebody says, well, you should love yourself regardless, for sure you should. Right. For sure you should. But if you want better, you should love yourself enough to, to achieve that better. Right. And that's the fine line where it's like, I don't care what other people think of you. 
I if if you care gonna, what you think, of I you. care what you think about yourself, right? Because like, the truth, though, the truth, not like the yeah, story. I could right. very easily say like, yeah, I love I love myself when I'm when I'm out of shape. Yeah, I love myself. Right. But if I look in the mirror every night and I'm like, oh shit, then that's the truth. That's the truth, right? And, and that's why it's like self love is great. I'm all you know. I'm all about that. Oh, if you're listening, you're watching. You know, I'm all about that. But also, like one of the realizations I've had is I love myself so much. Mm. that I I need to make sure I'm giving myself the best life I can, whether it be through anything, financial and impact, helping you guys, and I want to create a charity and all this stuff. But that first starts with me saying, like, how am I perceiving myself and what is the actual reality of my confidence level in this arena, in my body, when it comes to being self-conscious about height? Alan, I could lie to you and the listeners every day and say... I don't give a shit that I'm five foot five. Right. It doesn't bother me at all. <laughs> it does bother me. Right. It does bother me. And I could lie about it and it just nothing would come of that. Pretend what would come it didn't of that? exist. Exactly. Yeah. Instead of using it as an opportunity to get, get better. To, to get better. Right. To get yeah. better. I can't change that. Right. But right? I can change everything else. I can change the way I look at it. Right. I can change the excuses I make. I, it's That's why, like, obviously I'm fired up, but... That's because when I was doing the research of this, it's like, dude, I was that person for a long fucking time who right. maybe I was faking it at that point. Maybe I thought I was a badass. Right. I think I'm a badass now, but in right. different ways. In way- very different ways. In very different ways. Yeah. In, in uh, you know, being confident in chaos. Right. When shit's burning down, it's like, okay, I'm far more equipped than I used to be. By being vulnerable with you guys and telling you everything that's going on in my life, because what if you're going through the same thing? And I held that back. Right. Then I would never get through to you. And maybe you would leave this episode and say, like, nah, it didn't, that didn't resonate with me. I don't, I've never felt any of those things. If you felt those things, guess what? You can get through them because I'm working through them. Do I have everything figured out? No. But I'm trying. I'm working on it. And you can work too. How do we get people to... So there, there's this, these three steps to positive change that Tony Robbins always, always goes back to. Number one, see things as they are but not worse than they are. Mm. Number two, see things better than they are. That's the vision, right? Number three, make it the way you see it. Okay. How do we get that first step? How how do we get people to acknowledge the truth? Because I often say this. You can kind of tell yourself a story that you're in shape and then you go to some party and everybody's had that experience where you got a little too close to the camera. Oh, and yeah. then you saw yourself on Facebook and you're like, oh my God, is that how I really look? Yeah, it is. There's no filter anymore because someone else posted it. There's no like covering it up with clothing or whatever. It's like a really unflattering photo. Is that really how I look? Yeah. Okay. That's okay. Now that means, okay, time to get in shape, time to go to the gym, time to eat healthier, right? If it wasn't for that painful moment of truth, Would you change? The answer is no. How do we show people and ourselves that acknowledging the truth is what will set you free? I think, so number one, one of the problems is nowadays with technology, like I'm, I'm, I'm not harping on Snapchat and Snapchat filters. I'm not trying to make this about that. I'm guilty of that too. We, we all, we right. all. I, I actually no. I don't use filters. You no, know that. Because, I am because you're hyper conscious about but what the detrimental effects. Exactly yeah. because I know that that's not what I look it's like. Not true. And I don't right. want to fool anybody or myself, especially myself. Right. But it's like you. Everybody looks good in a Snapchat filter. Right. <laughs> yeah, man. Everybody yeah. does. Right. So it's like you could be that person who's different that says like. Okay, um, I'm going to take a picture of myself and see what I... You have to be committed. The, the ultimate thing is, man, you have to be committed to being a better version of yourself. Because if not, all that feedback, you're just going to find a way to cover it up. Yeah. When you and I have hard conversations, and this is something new to me, guys. I, I was never good at taking criticism. It took me a long time before I was able to take it. Why do I have... I have to be good at taking criticism now because this is my dream. Right. This is my dream. So you can either hide from it. I want to know how I did on this episode. Yeah, If we get sure. After this, we're going to talk about how the episode went. Yeah. I want to know. Yep. So if you're listening to this and you're, you felt feedback, you have to understand that you can do something with that feedback. That doesn't have to be the 
the the la- that was the last time I ever took a picture of myself after I after right. I saw myself. That doesn't that's not what it has to be. Right. That's not what it has to Remember be. Remember Andrew Copeland would would not buy new pants because he didn't want to admit that he yeah. got fatter. Yeah. But but needing to buy new pants would might be the catalyst to change the 120 pounds he's since lost. Yeah. The pain in the moment of feedback is it hurts, but it's actually a good thing. To go back to the Snapchat filter, I use them too. And, and it bothers me when I use them because I don't question why. And then I'm like, wait a minute, why am I using that? Oh, so for example, if you're out there and you're, you use Snapchat, you take a picture of yourself and then you filter it, imagine if you didn't filter it. Now you might have to question like, shit, maybe I need to hydrate more. Right. Or maybe I need to go to the gym more. Or maybe I need to take a little better care of my skin. The fact that you f- cover it up with a filter, it takes away the incentive to hydrate. The incentive to take better care of yourself. So the feedback is critical to growth. So if you listen to this podcast, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you like to grow. The amount of growth you will achieve in your life, I think, is directly predicated on how self-aware and how honest you are about the reality of, of who and where you are. If you're listening to this, how many beautiful men or women do you know that use filters, all of them, right? So, is it a is it a bigger problem? I th- I think it's, I think it's our subconscious need to feel good about ourselves. That, but that's I think that's, that's just not the way to do it. That's like me putting on stilts, right? You know what I mean, right? Like, Rather you, than I'm gonna get some lifts to put in my shoes, so when I go out to the bar, I'm three inches taller. No, that doesn't do anything for me. Let's get real. I asked you one time if you were six foot two. Do you think you'd be as good of a person as you are? And you said, hell no. No, probably not, because I wouldn't have a reason. Right. I, I wouldn't have the why power. The pain of feeling not good enough, quote unquote, during your upbringing um, is what created the Kevin. There's the alarm. Oh, my God, that went by fast. Yeah, it did. Is what created the Kevin that we all enjoy today. You, you know? Yeah. So the feeling of inadequacy that we run from, I kind of think. Might be the biggest mistake ever. I'm having trouble like <laughs> landing right, the point. Right. But like the, what I can say to you if you're listening is without me literally searching for my insecurities, like searching for them. Right. And asking myself, why are you doing this right now? Mm. Why are you acting that way? Why are you why are you afraid of what you're afraid of? Why are you afraid of rejection from women? Why? Right. Because it's not the rejection, it's the feelings and emotions you get from the rejection. Right. What is it about it you're afraid of? Yeah. Without me asking myself those things, without me chasing down my fears, you guys wouldn't be listening to us. This wouldn't be a thing. I would still be working at the job I was working at. Like, that's... It's, it's hard to land this, this thought. But if you're... I know you know what I'm talking about. If you listen... If I you're can listening, land it if I use you as an example. Go ahead. So Kevin, Kevin was. I'm, I know you want this. So yeah, so right. Um, right. So the the three steps: see things as they are, but not worse than they are. See things better than they are, and then make it the way you see it. Kevin was scared shitless of planes. Yes. He either tells himself a story, perception, that well, he just doesn't like to travel. I just don't like to travel. You just tell that story for the rest I of your life. To. I used Yo, to. I just don't like to travel, man. That's just travel's not for me. You know, I don't know. Just I don't like to travel. How many people do you hear say shit like that? If Kevin lived that life, you would never have gone to Phoenix. Right. You would never have gone to Florida. We're going again in March 4th. You would never have gone to England. And you would never be an international podcaster, speaker, all that stuff. Right. All right? So your dreams are gone if you tell yourself that bullshit story that you just don't like to travel. Really, Kevin? Or are you afraid, man? Right? The moment that you acknowledge the truth instead of that bullshit perception of it, that I'm afraid of planes, now he has the power to overcome that fear. By getting on a plane anyway. So, see things as they are, but not worse than they are. I'm afraid of planes. Fuck. What does that mean? Still afraid. What does that mean? That means I can't travel outside this country, outside this continent, for sure, Because unless you're going to get on a ship, right? Okay. So, what do I do about it? You know, see it better than it is. I see a version of Kevin where he travels and he's not afraid. Okay, make it the way you see it. What do you do? You get on a plane. You've been on fucking six planes since... You and I started working together. Now you kind of, we booked tickets not long ago. You weren't that scared. 
It, no, it's no. exposure therapy. But I want, if you're listening, like, this is one of my favorite things to say ever, and I don't mean it in a negative light, but I am nothing fucking special. I'm just not. The thing is, I took the initial step. Right. Of, took, of admitting you were afraid. Of, yeah, I'm terrified. I'm still afraid of planes, guys. I don't like them. When we get turbulence, I grab the seat like that's going to do something. <laughs> you know, but... You're still afraid? Oh, yeah, man. Really? Yeah, I don't like it. Right. I don't. I don't. I'm, right. Okay. You know, it's just, that's just the way it is. I don't plan, I don't think I'm ever going to like it, <laughs> you know? But Numbers, dog. I know, I know. Right. But it's, that's, <laughs> that is the requirement for me to be the man that I, I want to be. That is the requirement that I have to partake in if I'm going to have the level of impact that I desire so much. So it's like, I have something that's greater than me. Right. His desire to help the listeners. Yeah. It forced you to face the truth and yeah. therefore your fears. And that's the Kevin we now enjoy today. Yeah. Dude, that's crazy, man. It is this crazy. Is, this is... There's things that people, like, that people will never know because I don't even think to... Talk about it. I would never think to talk about it. But, like, when we were in Florida, I thought I was going to die. Like, do you remember when I was I sick? Do. Yeah, man. And I literally said, like, yo, I think I should go to the hospital because I don't... I feel like I'm going to die. Right. Like, that was just part of the journey. Now, I don't want that to happen to you. You were like, yo, I, I was crawling to you. I think I was in the shower and you were like about to crawl to like yeah, the I, door I to didn't like know, knock on it yeah. to see if like... I didn't know what to do. Because if you had passed out or whatever. Fuck, man. Yeah, but, but I'm not saying that because I want you to feel bad. That's not what it is. What it is is this is something that I want so badly. And that's I think that's why Alan and I are so passionate about you finding what your thing is. Because it's like... It's, gonna, yeah. it, it's like stepping on the mushroom in Mario. You you it boosts you up. You become a better person because you yeah, have to. Because you have to. Yeah. Because you have to. I I need to be the best version of myself so I can help as many of you out as I can. Right. Like that's the only option for me. So where are you deluding yourself into thinking you're worse than you are? Me? No, no, no. Oh, I, the I listeners. Say, Sorry, I'm kind of like wrapping yeah, this yeah, up. Yeah, no, no, you're good. So a couple questions for the listeners. Really, really sit down with these, please. Where and say this, okay, where am I deluding myself into thinking I'm better than I am? That's going to give you things you need to work on, right? Where am I deluding myself into thinking I'm worse than I am? And, and maybe those things that you're worse than you are are holding you back from trying, right? So, like, figure out where you're deluding yourself. And I have a dramatic reading about accurate hammer thinking it. that I think will re really hammer this home for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This has been... I enjoyed this recording this. this it's, it's, dude, these are the ones when I'm, when I'm really feeling... When I felt... Right. When I know what these things feel like, I get so fired up and so passionate because I, I don't want anybody to have to feel the ways I've felt. Right, man. That's why I do what I do. All right, dramatic reading time. This is from a book called The Law of Success by Napoleon Hill. It's thick. 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 All right, here we go. Most of us... Ooh, let me go to the next page. Next page. Okay, I'm sorry. Worst yeah, no, reading I found ever. It. I found it. I found it. We're good. We're good. For thousands of years... Men made ships of wood and of nothing else. They used wood because they believed that it was the only substance that would float. But that was because they had not yet advanced far enough in their thinking process to understand the truth that steel will float. And that is far superior to wood for building of ships. They did not know that anything could float which was lighter than the amount of water is displaced. And until they learned of this great truth, they went on making ships of wood. Okay, so all progress is predicated on more truth. So here's the second part. Accurate thought involves two fundamentals which all who indulge in it must observe. First, to think accurately, you must separate facts from mere information. That's really hard today. Yeah. Because we're all bombarded with a bunch of information. And that's what we try to do on this podcast, by the way. We try to bring you all of the personal development industry and all the things we're learning and going through and experiencing, and we try to bring you closer to the truth. Okay. There is much information available to you that is not based upon facts, more so now than ever, by the way. Yes. Second, sure. you must separate facts into classes, namely the important and the unimportant. In other words, the relevant and the irrelevant. irrelevant. So for fitness, that's what I did. I did. It took me three and a half years to get rid of the irrelevant information. The relevant information, sleep, hydration, nutrition, training, and mobility, and I have a laundry list of things under each of those pillars that actually matter, and how do I know that? Because I've failed forward enough times to find the truth of what really works. That's the way everything works. So, perception versus reality. How should we sum this episode up? I, I just want to say that 
your reality is going to be the parts of your imagination that hang on the longest, positive or negative. If you think you're a certain way and you hang on to those for your entire life, that's the way your life's going to look. If you think that you're capable of changing the world and you believe that until your last dying breath, I guarantee you have more of an impact on the world. And 100%. I, I firmly believe that's the only reason we're doing this. Right. Because we want our reality to be that. Right. Right. That's the only reason we're doing it. So I firmly believe that yeah, your reality becomes the part of your imagination that hangs on the longest. So make sure the part of your imagination that's hanging on is the positive one. Right. And not the one saying, I'm not enough. Not the one saying, I could never do that. Not the one saying, I'm not smart enough, or that's not the type of person I am, or right. I'm not worthy, or I'm not beautiful, or whatever it is. Right. Like, the, imagine, the imagination is a powerful thing. But it make is. sure, it's like, it's like anything, make sure you're using it for good. Like I was told, and this will be the last thing that I say, I was told in high school that you had to be a genius to go to MIT. I was told not to even apply because I wouldn't get in. Was that true? No. Absolutely not. I didn't even apply because I just said, oh, well, I guess, I guess I'm not going to MIT then because I didn't believe that I could get in because I, I took their perception of reality that I couldn't get in and I internalized it and I allowed that to hold me back from even trying. The reality was I could probably have gotten in. So don't let someone else's perception become your reality and make sure that your perception is based on the truth and the, the best way you're going to do that is is to really consciously say okay where do I really fall where do I really fit am I really is this my real talent is this my real gift is this what I really want is this the person I really want or is this just the story I'm telling myself so if you're listening this more than anything just question some things right just question why you're doing what you're doing. Are you feeling good after you're doing them? Okay, if not, then why are you doing them? Right. That's, that's one of the biggest things. That's what hyperconsciousness is. That's what getting new levels of self-awareness is. It's just asking yourself the questions and then answering them even when the answer is hard and it hurts in the moment. You can lie to yourself for your entire life. I did it for a long time and it got me nowhere. When I started telling myself the truth, that's when I started making changes and that's what, you know, that's what we want for you guys that that means the world to us so wow we went deeper yeah we did what are we 30, I love what you just said man 33 minutes when in. i started telling myself the truth that's when i started making changes yeah man that's, that's fire this, this it's your post for tonight very, <laughs> very <laughs> hopefully you guys are having breakthroughs but as we do these episodes we get to have breakthroughs too with you right which is so amazing so uh we hope you enjoyed as much as we enjoyed recording and ask yourself some hard questions and if you don't like the answers reach out to us and you know dm us and we're more than willing to to help as much as we can if there's any topics you want us to do on small talks regarding a, a word or um, scratching the surface episodes we'd love to hear your feedback of the ones we've been doing and topics you'd like us to touch on um, please dm me at a lazarus 88 a l a z a r o s 88 and the at never quit at never quit kid i was gonna say so i still do have um some spots open for coaching obviously after that painful right you know <laughs> after all that's probably not the best time to say it but <laughs> this is what it's all about to us Mm. I, I firmly believe the more you know about yourself, the better equipped you are to handle the life of your dream. So that's what we're all about. So I have a couple spots open. If you want to go deep like that, I promise it won't be as hard. <laughs> right. The, the first call. Yeah. Good? Yeah, absolutely. Ladies and gents, we will chat with you later. Talk to you soon. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so very much for listening to another episode of the Hyperconscious Podcast. Going hyperconscious will absolutely change your life because if you understand why something is the way it is, now you have the power to change it. If you going hyperconscious with us has changed your life in any way, please share this episode with one of your friends because the more people that go hyperconscious, the better this world's going to be for everybody. And if you would kindly leave us a five star review on iTunes, that would help us make more people hyperconscious and we would be greatly appreciative. Thank you. Bye.